next. I'll go next. Mine's okay. pretty long too, so I might as well yeah. get it out the way. All right. Let me get everything up. Oh, that's bright. Okay. Share screen. Listen. Okay. Love it. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Yeah. Okay. There. Okay. So just going to say this. There's a lot of games on my list. Don't be afraid when you see so many games. We're not going to talk about them in crazy depth, but they're just like, there's a lot of games that came out this year that I really like. So I just wanted yeah, to it was hard. touch yeah, it was bottom, on, bottom half of the on list them. is hard to do. <laughs> and then there's three games that I have nitpicks with that I want to address at first. So we're going to go okay. through, through them. Uh, uh Oh, uh Oh, I, you, you got animated gifs, gifs. Yeah. yeah. I got, I got jiffies over here. Jiffies. But yeah, Spider-Man 2, JJ pretty much covered it. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's so it's so strange to me that Sony, like, they have this prestige really about about them that like you expect all their first party titles to kind of hit that, like, oh, like we expect this type of quality from Sony. And Spider-Man 2, for some reason, doesn't get anywhere near like close to even like the first game, which is like very strange. Uh, I don't know what happened. But the story is just really bad. Miles is like has the worst story. His like biggest thing in the game is he needs to write a college like <laughs> essay. Like stuff's going on. He's like, I need to say Peter, but my essay. Oh no! Like that's like his biggest thing. And, 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 and that's, it sucks. A, that's a thread that keeps going till the very end of the game. Like the final cutscene. The is final cutscene of, of the game. He writes his five hundred word essay. <laughs> like, it's five 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 hundred words, and yeah and he's also really strong too like he's like stronger than peter and there's just like the power scaling is crazy and crazy now i don't know where they're gonna gonna go but yeah but the venom story is really good amazing uh power scaling sucks the worst mj and peter they they're horrid they're like <laughs> they're they're like a like a Christian couple who have never like held hands before, or they've like never like kissed each other. It's so strange. It, there's no chemistry. It's so it's, funny considering like in the first game, it's canon that Peter and Black Cat fucking like raw dog. Like <laughs> yeah, like... and then there's nothing here with yeah. MJ, and they live. They want to live together. Is whatever. Um, and Spider-Man has too many gadgets and gizmos. They're all like Iron Man stuff, which I don't really like. I hate I've that that's the direction. The Iron Spider stuff. And yeah, it's like it's like Iron Spider is like the intended way to play as Spider-Man, which is I. There's so many things in this game. I'm like, did Sony Studios like push for this to happen? And that feel that's the biggest one to me that feels like okay, this is, uh, this is this was a mandate by the big big guy um by the big yeah. hogs yeah and then tears of the kingdom jj kind of touched on it too like i <laughs> this game is this game is really good like i love the the game of it and the gameplay is so fun there's so much fun stuff to do the world's amazing the graphics are amazing it runs so well for a switch game oh my gosh charts, i loved it man love it charts but there's just like the bloat and the, so the, there's so much bloat with like the shrines and other things. I feel like they should have approached that from a different angle. There's too many shrines. The way you get like health, the way you get stamina is the same from the last game. I feel like they could have iterated on that more. There's just so many things that I feel are like lost that they could have improved, improved on. But the big chunk of like the actual gameplay is great. Like it's like so fun. <laughs> the world's so great to explore, but yeah um but yeah my chart over here my enjoyment over time this is this is pretty true um the boss hp joke at the end definitely <laughs> made me made my enjoyment go up but then i went back 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 down that part where it breaks the hp bar is great uh, yeah yeah and then darkest dungeon 2 this game just sucks man he's gonna talk about it yep it it just like it's like it took everything that the fans liked from the first game and just didn't do it. It's kind of crazy. crazy. It's, it's kind of crazy that they did it. Yeah. Honestly. Um, yeah, it's nuts. I straight up forgot Dark and Stunted <laughs> 2 was a thing this year. Same. Same. <laughs> it's bad. Yeah. And, and it was a full early access title. Like it went through it, was, it went it went through the whole ringer. 
Um, and it still came out that way. And, and I, don't, I mean, like they, did, they didn't I, listen I'm, to their fans. I'm all <laughs> about like don't don't just remake the first game. Um, but it was kind of it was the polar opposite way that they went with it was kind of weird. Yeah, it's like way more streamlined. It feels like an iPad game is weird. It's I don't know. It, it needs to be studied the way they mess this one up. Um, but yeah, this is these are the games where it's like, hey, these are good. So we got my my little guy. Uh, <laughs> I love him. Um. Okay. Goodbye, Volcano High. This game oh, cool. is really good. Uh, it's a pretty much like like high school story. Uh, about a meteor crashing into the earth uh, and th- these kids dealing with the impending doom of their lives any like they're about to graduate but now it's like we we like we're like our future is taken away uh, it's really emotional characters are great yeah it's good it's I'm surprised people haven't talked about it as much as they have as as much as they should because it's like it's a sony like first party game for one i mean it's on pc but it's only on sony consoles which is kind of weird and they advertise that game a lot too so yeah it's neat if you like story games sitting down visual novels check it out has a part where you play guitar and sing and press buttons and yeah it's really introspective it's definitely a covid game so it's like, <laughs> like oh, they made this during the lowest points of their entire life. Uh, yeah. Uh, Sweaky game. This game yeah. rules. I don't think we can say yeah. anything else, yeah. else, else about it. Uh, Pizza Tower. Here it is. Yeah. That's great. JJ said it was great. Uh, Honkai Star Rail and Nikkei. You see, these Nikkei. games are amazing. But Nikkei Sweet. is like, it's such, this game I played consistently throughout the whole year. It has really like sexy characters with like big butts and boobs and stuff, but it's that Yoko Taro angle of it where it's like, he's they're pulling you in to give you a story that's just designed to rip your guts out and make you feel like bad and introspective. And it's a mobile gotcha game, which is amazing. Um, Dark and darker. This is a recent acquisition. I bought it a couple days ago and started playing it. And I was like, Oh, this is actually like, a really it's it's for people who don't know it's like an extraction shooter but instead of it being like a shooter it's like you go into dungeons and you're you're like a rogue a wizard whatever like all these things and you have classes you, and you have to like level them up and get loot and all these other things but you're going in there with other people and if they kill you they can take your loot and you lose stuff but you're like trying to level up and it's fantasy it's like tarkov if you know about that but with swords and stuff really really fun really interesting take on the genre and interesting story they got raided by the police and a bunch of fun stuff and it's great though uh book of hours i can't i forgot this game even came out but (laughs) i was making my list i was like oh yeah that game did come out but basically it's by the cultist simulator people. I was gonna it's say, a, le, I, I was like, I was like, wait, I know this, I, I know this cover, but like, yeah. a, but not this one. And yeah, I, now I know a, why. It's a sequel to the cultist simulator where you live in a small town and you're basically there to recover books and study the occult, and you can or and you basically like have this big live this big house and full of shelves and books and all these things and you're trying to figure out the best places to put them and figure out like the esoteric side of that book like where would it best be what should it be by like all these interesting things with like a story on the outside going on and all these like multi meta level things uh it's really super good it's a lot less complicated than their last game but that's for the better i think but it uses the same systems and things so yeah and then oh yeah then this uh star ocean second story r this game amazing it's so good um, <laughs> I, played, I played the demo of this which was like super robust i mean you know it's like it's like a classic demo where it's like here's the first three hours of the game you're like <laughs> and it's a long yeah. ass game um yep. and but the it's kind of it's kind of good <laughs> it's really good and it gets even crazier it has so many systems to it that are so weird like like 
there's a management sim side of it where your characters get stats and if you level up those like specific stats within the simulator they get like another classification like merchant whatever all these things and you can like have like your people do like go sell items and all these like third like third tertiary things that you can do affect how well they are in battle within the game and it's like oh if you have two people who are good at music they're going to be better working together and more attack blah, blah, blah. like so much stuff so much things to grind is crazy get it uh then as you move forward remake it's amazing funny funniest game of the year <laughs> yeah. really <laughs> yeah that's funny it's, man. it's funny man and yeah. i sometimes in a lot of ways not intentionally so but also in a lot sure. of ways it was clearly written to be a corny action movie and it pulls yeah it there's a every time. part where leon like shoots some zombies in night armor and he goes nighty night nights and yeah. it's just like it's great it's funny that's so i think that's probably the most that's clipped awesome. thing i've ever seen from resident evil where's, it, remake. where's everyone going bingo <laughs> yeah uh, dude, it's it's good if play like, plays really well yeah. And yeah, it's. I'm glad Cap Capcom's just like on a roll. Remember when they made a made? Well, remember when they made an iOS port of the remake? Yeah. yeah did oh jeez. Yeah. 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 Anyway, that's not yeah, what we're talking this, about. That guy looked happy dancing. Oh yeah, it's baby baby Bowser. This is this is the good the like the best best games. Uh, Hi-Fi Rush. Um, yeah, man, this game came out at the beginning of the year and like shadow I've, drop. I've been thinking about it ever since I, it has so many like cool songs in it that are like not even original songs, but like actual like licensed songs from like amazing artists like Trent Besner and so uh, red hot chili peppers, all these bands. And there's like all the fights, like the big bosses are synced to those big epic like fights. Yeah. So it's a rhythm game, action game, together really fun kind of hard to explain unless you see it but you basically have to hit the buttons in time with yeah. the time of the song as you're going through things and if you're hitting on time the more damage you do but it's also just a fully fledged like devil may cry game on top of that which is nuts it's crazy the characters are all good the game's really funny mm -hmm. has a good story it's by a director who this is his first time with doing a game like he was under what's his face uh tango game works guy i forget his name yeah yeah he was working under him for so long so obviously he had training and like help and stuff so he's learned a lot from him but this Mikami, being his yeah okay. yeah so this being his directorial debut and it being so mm. just like full of life and interesting and such a cool concept for a game. It's just like, man, like I like, this is what, this is what I play games for these really fun, interesting concepts that have really grainy and like tech tactile systems that like allow me to engage on a level that I can't with like other games. Uh, this is like a very good example of, what I look for in games, but also I look for games that have amazing stories and are weird, like these two. Oh, dude, I wanted to go. I was yeah. yeah. When I saw you post about, it, I was like, "Yo, I have to play. I have to get this game." Yeah. So, Basilisk 2000 is by the person who made Lunacid, who that which came out this year. It was in early access for like two or three years, and they also released Basilisk this year as well, which is kind of like a interesting companion piece to. Unicid, which is like this Kingsfield kind of first person dungeon explorer PS1 type game. But Basilisk 2 2000. Yeah, Lunacid, I don't give a shit about. But Basilisk, yeah. I'm like, you just, yeah, you, you, gave, you gave me like the, the two sentence synopsis, and I was like, okay. All yeah. right. Yeah, you got so me. So it's basically like you're, it's like, a canceled game that was going to come out on the super Nintendo or something. And a dev like downloaded the, like the game onto a USB and just like put it, put it out basically. And the hook is you explore the game through the dev environment. So you, this is, so the screen on the right is what you see when you're playing and you, and you're walking around looking at things and like 
clipping into environment, like finding code words to put into the bar at the bottom left to type like skeleton room or whatever to like teleport to that place. And you find clues like developing this like kind of like story in the background about the devs too. So you'd like dig through the, like the fake code and read comments about the, the, like how the game was coming together and all these is so cool. It's really great. You can talk to NPCs and they'll say like, yeah, I need to go to this town. And then you type in that town name, you go there. It's like, okay. So you can like follow the main quest of the game that never got made, but also the meta quest of like the guys making it and saying like, Jerry, why'd you put the FOV up so high at this place? I'm like, it's, it's great. It's so cool. <laughs> and especially like my year being like where I was making this game and kind of like being like, like super deep in that kind of area. This was really fun. Like, oh yeah, like this is something that, happened when we were making type typecast and stuff so that was fun but yeah it's a really interesting game that you have to read and like find things but yeah it's great uh whoop. final fantasy 16 is yeah um it's a game that i expected to like a lot more but it's not saying that it's not amazing but it's just there's other things i like a lot more than this which is crazy but yeah, it's it is such a cra- it's such a crazy game, at least for me, for being a Final Fantasy like fan, but also for being a Final Fantasy fourteen fan because it's the same team who made fourteen made this game. They've been working on this game for a decade alongside Final Fantasy fourteen, which is just kind of blows my mind. Uh, but they're able to make this like really, really. It's not as intense as Devil May Cry. It's not like so combat heavy where it's like not going to be fun for normal people, but it it's it's at an interesting level to where if you have never played a Devil May Cry game, this would be a great entry point. But that's like not why you play Final Fantasy games. You play for the story. And I think the story is it's super good, but it retreads a lot of the same themes that 14 does. So it's like, okay, I've seen this. I kind of know what they're doing here. But I think for a mainline big entry title for the series, it's like, man, like this is something it's so different. I understand why people aren't as high up on it as I am, because it's just so like this isn't an RPG it's an action game or that that whole that whole thing, whatever. But it does so much right. And it also has so many interesting like lore and mechanics and just stuff just like overall for the world. That's great. Um, Yeah. It's worth definitely worth playing. If you have a PlayStation five, the PC port, they are having issues with it because of the SSDs and all that stuff. So yeah, sure. but it's wonderful. Um, Story made me cry. There's some amazing boss fights that have some of the best music I've heard all year. Like there's great a Titan. voice acting. The the voice voice acting's great. It's not Shout the out to the side, qu- side questing's friend Ben Star. Ben Star. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he he killed it for his first time Ooh. being in a, a game, which is great. But there's this boss fight with Behemoth, not you know, with Titan that you do. That you're Ifrit, you're like this big, and Titan's like like huge miles tall huge and you just just little ifrit running up his arm and he's trying to beat you up and there's this surf like butt rock beach boy song playing in the background it's insane it is so crazy it's it and it's only something Love that it. the final fantasy 14 team uh, would do because they do that in 14 a lot where they yeah. have these like off the wall songs but it's just like it's crazy there's like dubstep songs and there's like all these like like electronic music that comes out of nowhere yeah it it's 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 such a good like cinematic sit in your in your sit on your couch with your controller in the dark experience blasting the tv it's great love it um <gasps> alan way too yeah so oh, he alan- did it LA2 is crazy. Um, yeah, so JJ already kind of touched on all the things that I liked about the game, but what really, really what I like about it is the meta 
of the game is so interesting to me because there's so many times within the game where you can see the touches of the developers in the way the level is made where you're like, Oh, okay. That's interesting. Okay. So then you like, you learn the way the game will load things. And it's like, it wants you to know this specific tiny detail, which it doesn't matter, but (laughs) it'll like, you'll walk through a room and you'll open a door and you'll be back where you just entered, but you can go back into the hallway and look and be like, Oh, this is, this is the barrier that loaded this scene. And you'll notice those little details like, Oh, the wallpaper is peeled. So you'll go walk through another area in the game and you'll notice wallpaper being peeled. And you're like, Okay, something's gonna happen here, and it does. And you're like, wait, what is this? So you just like notice these these little things. They're just like so like most people aren't going to catch it, but it's there. And it's just like it's that level of detail that I love. But there's this level design of it too, where like you're playing as Alan Wake in New York City, and of course you can't have New York City be this big sprawling thing on any on on any console, but. The way this game makes it feel like it's this never ending maze is just like you walk into an area going downstairs, open the door, you're upstairs above where you just went down. Yeah. And it's like, like your brain doesn't catch it until a second later. And you're like, wait, like, how did I get f-? like, and it, it's just, it's, it's that level of like, they're messing with me and I'm aware of it. And they're aware that I'm aware of it now. Yeah. And it's just like, I've never had a game like poke at me and like make fun of me. Kind of like, Oh yeah. You think that's cool. Well, watch this. It's like, Arr. it's like, it's, it messes with you. And then the story itself as being told on top of that yeah. is also this like meta thing that you're aware of and the writers aware of, and the characters are aware of at the same time. Yeah. And you and these four people that one's not two of them aren't real one of them is real and one of them's you are aware of this at the same time it's just like this it's it's crazy i don't know how they ever thought about it how they ever planned it or anything yeah it's nuts it's so funny because like out the gate you realize that everything is wrong in this game like every level everything feels wrong and they know you know everything feels wrong they te- they they hint at stuff but it, it it they let the reveal take its time for a lot of stuff even yeah. when you already you you know what the broad strokes of everything's gonna be but like it, yeah. it has you it you want to you you need to see it through the end it's yeah it it the th- theme of the game is spiraling it's kind of like how it yeah. is the theming of it and the game will spiral back in on itself yeah. story story wise through the game game yeah. play through you realizing things yeah it's just such an it's it's a crazy experience like yeah it it's something that you have to play to experience i don't think you need to play all the other games before it but you need to play at least alan wake one that's yeah. it but I think, if yeah, you yeah. know other things, yeah. it makes the game even better. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's it's just some it's a game that we're, we're never gonna get again. This is never gonna exist again. A game will never look like this, feel like this, be this ever. This is it, and that's why you should play it. But it's not even my favorite game of the year, which is crazy. Well, I will say, oh, go back real quick. <laughs> I will say what's wild about this is uh I'm sitting in the game awards and I'm watching them do this, the dance number. And I'm like, I don't understand this band. I don't know what is going on. This is, like, <laughs> this is like the stupidest thing I've ever seen. And Zach's like, no dude, it's from the game. I'm like, uh, how? And so, and you're like, and so, okay. Yeah. How? I'm like, how? Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to break my no spoiler thing. And I'm going to go search out. So I hopped on YouTube when I got back to the hotel room, search out. I'm like, Oh shit! This is badass, and I'm like, okay, I get it. I get why yeah. everyone like the scene. It's a band that's a real band in real yeah. life that has a song from a game that's a fake band that broke the charts in real life as a fake Amazing. band, which is Alan Wake Two, pretty much like consolidated into like one thing. The way My, that the way the entire uh, musical section of the game plays out is 
baffling sure. how good they pulled it off. It's like it doesn't it stops feeling like a video game. Like it yeah. really it's it's so crazy. I yeah, one no, of my favorite things in gaming this year was that whole segment. No, like, no my favorite part, JJ, was yeah. where you're doing the cult stuff that Max Payne talks about. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're like, you're doing you're doing what Max Payne has talked about in Max Payne, but also what he talked about at the beginning of the game. Yeah. And you're like, so you're going through like you're going through like like a cycle over and over again. Yeah. And Sam Lake's there and and Max Payne's talking. And then you go to like one of the cycles and it's Sam Lake talking instead. Yeah. He's like, Will you let me out, please? I'm stuck. And you're like, yeah. oh. Sam Wake, I, I, I get I it, man. man. I wish I could help I'm you. I'm tied up. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I'm stuck. I'm sorry, man. No, was, I think. It, th- yeah, no. And that was real Sam Lake actually pleading with <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, it was like, like yeah. It's... But <laughs> my favorite. <laughs> yeah, no. He, he's like talking. You're like, I, I got to go. There's a guy chasing me. I got to leave. But there's my favorite reveal. I think the thing that I've seen overall on Twitter, whatever is people being like, Alan Wake isn't a good writer. That realization <laughs> yeah. that you get hit oh, by, because yeah. you, because in the game, you're in Alan Wake's mind, and you have to move plot points around on a board to change the that physical location <laughs> of the of of the game. But you're like, you're like, wait, this kind of sucks. But Alan Wake <laughs> thinks it's the coolest thing ever. He's like, yeah, I just thought about this new thing, doing blah, blah. It's, it's like, bro, you've done that before. It's not that cool. And he just thinks it's the coolest thing. So well. And then, and then he just keeps doing it. Yeah, yeah dude. It's like, he's it's like, like, oh, he's a hack writer this whole time. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. But he was in the first game, too. But it's yeah. just like, now it's just like, oh, he's stuck in his own writing like and he's he's like it sucks so bad i'm like yeah, yeah bro you wrote it yeah um but yeah no <laughs> that's when you die that's what happens yeah. um but yeah no Baldur's gate 3 obviously <laughs> on here this is how this is how the game is right. when you actually play it if someone dies there's a um character she and matthew mercer but really Baldur's gate 3 besides everything else people have said about it all these things it's the only time people who don't have a group of friends to play D and D with will ever get to experience what a Dungeons and Dragons campaign is. Like it's like, it's the perfect video game version of a D and D campaign and what it could be if executed at the level by Matthew Mercer, who also voices Ganondorf, who also voices a character in Baldur's Gate three, who also voices a character in the VR game that JJ talked about. Asgard's so, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's just, it's amazing. It's a hundred hours long. It's there's so many systems, so much stuff, blah, blah, blah. Everyone's played it. It's great. My brain just doesn't let me enjoy it. Like I, my brain sure. doesn't work yeah. that way. I, yeah. I, I, I recognize Baldur's Gate three as a phenomenal game, but boy, does my brain just not, I'm, I'm in that I'm in that yeah. same boat. I I, yeah. I know people who absolutely I know why people absolutely love it, and I totally yeah. respect it for that. It just yeah. it never clicked because of all those systems. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's just a lot to take in, and it it's a lot of like there is a lot of a lot of responsibility for you as a player, which is like for I'm just for me i'm just shocked that it took off as much as it has because it's 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 this type of game that doesn't get popular because of all the things that people are complaining about it's like yeah i know that's what this game is (laughs) it's like i don't know why it's so popular (laughs) i love watching people play this game though yeah that's it's like yeah all right i'm just gonna sit back i mean the the renaissance for dungeons and dragons especially with the movie i think brought a lot of people to this too Critical yeah, Role has brought it, role for, 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 it, brought it to yeah. a level un, un, unseen since like the 80s. <laughs> yeah. uh, Critical Role has a million dollar TV show produced by Amazon Studios. Like yeah. they're Crazy. Yeah, they're the whole reason why this is even a thing. But yeah. Um, but you know, so follow yeah. up. <laughs> this is still not my favorite game of the year, but it's my second to last. So we'll talk about this. JJ already covered a lot of it. Um, but my, I, I, I need to touch on him Yeah, I need, and there's a story moment that happens in the first 45 minutes that yes. I think represents 
what makes this game so good is its writing. Obviously, it's an adventure game, but this little bear was the two main characters' daughter's robot friend, right? And the two and the couple have basically reverse engineered this robot to be like an engineering thing for them to get scrap out of these oil rigs. So he's kind of a machine now because they don't need him to be this like emotional support thing for their daughter because their daughter passed away. So there's a moment in this game where you play as the bear and he says something that both of the parents have heard okay, before. Sure. Do I have to take my headphones off? No, 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 no. No, this is so no, no. early in yeah, the game. This is so early. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Yeah. So he says something that both the parents have heard before when their daughter died. And there's a moment that happens with between the characters that is something as written in a video game I've never felt or experienced before. It is insane. And it just goes from there like that's the in that's the intro that's the intro to to this game is just like and it's such a subtle thing i feel like most people will miss it but it's that level of like like a jaw-dropping experience that i was like whoa yeah everyone play it i'm not gonna say anything else play it that's it it's messed up it's is a horrible, horrible game made by horrible, horrible, dark, <laughs> disgusting people, but it's great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But no, my real game of the year is. Oh. You know, I think this game is one of the best design. I think, and not even is, it definitely is the best design game I think I've ever played. Uh, there is a level of interactivity and like appreciation not not appreciating but interactivity and trust that the game gives to the player that i don't think any other game really can give over because so basically in cocoon you're this little bug guy who carries these little orbs on his back inside the orbs are other worlds okay so you have these worlds that you can jump into right but you have multiple orbs that you carry around that you need to use. They can only be placed in certain spots. You can only use, use them after completing a certain thing within the world of that orb of that cocoon. So there are times where you have multiple orbs within one orb that you have to place, jump into that orb, grab the orb, jump out of the orb. You just went into with the other orb to then swap the orbs to go into the orb you just grab to open up to get an item that only that world has that will allow you to go past a part within the orb that you're already in. So there's like each orb has a power. Each orb has an item within it that you want and you'll have to use throughout the world. It is crazy. There. It it gets to a point where you might need a map and having to know what each orb does, where it, cause like you reach points within an orb that you can't continue anymore. So obviously you need to jump out and go find where you can continue next. And it's like, okay, this orb gives me this power to create pillars. And this, this third orb I have needs pillars. So now let me figure out, how to place the orbs so I can layer them on top of each other to go into that orb to continue the story (laughs) and then unlock that orbs power. And then, Oh, that power gives me this. So the, the blue orb needs that. So I need to, I need to unravel this to put it in. And like, it's, it's in, it's just insanity, but it's, it's designed so well because a game like this, you could get lost in because there's so much stuff but it's designed so well that you're not like aware of it being designed. You're you're not aware that you're being pushed because it's like, Oh, like I'm so confused. But then you take a step back and you think you're like, wait, Oh, okay. This is a lot easier. It's a perfect puzzle game. There's not really a, there's a story, but not really like an overbearing story. Oh yes. Made by the guy who made limbo and inside. So obviously a good team of people, but yeah, 
Which it's is why the first... it was their debut win at the Game Awards because they'd never made a game before. Yeah. That's why, yeah, but it's my Our it's the first game yeah. I played on my Steam Deck. <clears throat> and yeah, it was just an experience because I was also kind of holding an orb in my hands too as I was I was playing oh. it. I was like, oh, this is like there's there's this level of interactivity that I was having with that game that's just I think is really pure and like quintessential like video game. Like this is this is awesome. this could only happen within a game. And that's why it's my game of the year. So Amazing. 